Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. We hear of the first encounters, the first appearances of Jesus to his disciples after the resurrection. So hear now God's word. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in Jesus' name. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Originally, I thought that the title for this sermon would be a resurrection reality. But the Spirit has renamed it. Um, and it is called Life After Trauma. I have come to understand the two as being deeply intertwined. So let us pray that the Spirit guide my words and our meditations this morning. God, our Comforter and Redeemer, we pray for your wisdom and grace. Help us to see your face, the face of Jesus within ourselves, in our neighbor, and in each story, as you know the fullness of human suffering, and you embody the hope that emerges from it. Christ, our sibling, guide my words and all of our thoughts that we might be a witness to your story. Amen. Now that some of the classes at seminary are back in person, I was visiting with a few students before class. We were talking about hospitality and whether or not we would receive visitors unannounced. One of my friends bluntly stated, there are only two people who can come to my apartment without an invitation, and that is my mother and Jesus Christ. 
The scripture reading today tells of Jesus visiting unannounced. Not only that, but the announcement that Jesus made is just as surprising. After sharing God's peace, Jesus' first words are, As my Father, my heavenly parent, has sent me, so I send you. Jesus miraculously shows up after his friends and disciples watched him be brutally killed, and they get no time to process his return. You'd think that there would be a celebration or a reunion, but instead of coming back together for old time's sake, Jesus sends the disciples out. Instead of hiding the scars, Jesus lets them be a witness of the resurrection. Instead of going back to how things were before Jesus died, Jesus invites the disciples to join him in something new. This curious tells us something about the resurrection reality that Jesus brings into the world. Jesus showed to his disciples then and to his disciples now that resurrection is not about coming back from the dead. It is about coming to new life through Christ. It doesn't erase the pain, but rather redeems it. So what is the resurrection reality? Based on this passage from John, it seems to involve a lot of peace and forgiveness, embracing the Holy Spirit, and going out into the world to bear witness to Christ's new life. Resurrection can seem supernatural, or something that is reserved for Jesus. But I have come to believe that we live through this pattern of life and death and resurrection many times in our life and faith. We embody this pattern through ritual, like in baptism, as we die with Christ and come to new life with Christ, as we accept our identity as God's beloved children. Systemically, we testify to the resurrection reality whenever we hold on to hope in midst of tragedy, that violence, war, and death will not get the final word. And personally, we walk the path of resurrection each time we go through something hard and find hope on the other side. The resurrection reality says that there is new life on the other side of trauma. The crucifixion was a traumatic event, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And Jesus is a survivor of that trauma. Even in the resurrection, Jesus bears the scars. Jesus even showed the scars to his disciples, to all of them, not just to Thomas. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. I don't hear this as scolding Thomas for wanting to see Jesus' scars, because the rest of the disciples wanted to see them too. Instead, I hear Jesus saying, Blessed are those who have not seen my scars, but who still believe they are real. This blessing includes us, as people who have not seen the scars, but who still believe in Jesus' pain and resurrection. It is part of the Christian witness to believe a trauma survivor without needing to have lived their story. It is part of the Christian witness to believe a survivor regardless of if you have seen their scars. I'm going to say it one more time. It is a Christian witness 
to believe trauma survivors. And there is a whole spectrum of trauma, whether it be that of the cross, or war, or wound, or abuse, whether it is personal or generational, whether it is church trauma or trauma from the ongoing pandemic. There is life after trauma. There is life after trauma, whether it is physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, or a mix of all of the above. In the resurrection, Jesus Christ shows us that there is life after trauma. And like Christ, you do not have to hide the scars. And like Christ, you do not have to show them either. You and the wholeness of your being are welcomed by God. And you are welcome here. As I thought about what it means to be a witness of the resurrection reality, I thought about how I have had a glimpse of it throughout this year. And I'd like to share my witness with you, to, with you all today. As many of you know, my spouse Victor is from Mexico. We have spent the last two years wandering through the desert of the U.S. immigration system as we applied for Victor to get a visa to live with me here. Over that time, I have come to realize that this process has been traumatic. It was brutal to beg the government to let me live with my spouse and then suffer a year of complete silence with no one to contact and no way of knowing if our application had been lost in the bureaucratic abyss it was painful in ways that I cannot describe to separate from my beloved without knowing when we would see each other again, especially during the pandemic when we weren't sure if they would close the borders again. My spiritual director, who is a wise, wise woman, helped me to make meaning out of our rhythm of separation and reunion. She told me that each time we say goodbye, it was a kind of death. The long distance was like the uncertain hope of Holy Saturday, as we anticipated being together again, but we're not together yet. And each time we are reunited, it is a witness to the truth and joy of the resurrection. When Victor was approved for his green card, I felt like I could breathe again. And after two years of holding my breath, that is a kind of resurrection. When we were finally reunited without the ticking clock of the next plane to catch, that was the moment that I felt like we stepped into new life together. And when Club 116 threw us a party to welcome Victor into the community, that felt like a celebration of new life, too. This is all to say that we experience the resurrection reality in small and large ways throughout our lives. When we have hope that injustice and grief are not the end of the story, that is a witness to the resurrection. The resurrection reality promises healing but it does not promise to avoid pain in the first place. Resurrection is not about coming back from the dead, coming back from the thing that felt like it killed you. It is the invitation to be transformed and find new life with Christ, who accompanies us on the path of resurrection. And that path points to life after trauma. And we know that God invites us, all of us, into this resurrection reality because Jesus breathed onto the disciples. Jesus breathed on them the breath of God, the breath of the resurrection, the breath of new life. 
And I believe that as disciples today, we are filled with that breath too. Breath and spirit are deeply intertwined. Whether the word is ruach in Hebrew or pneuma in Greek, the languages of our spiritual ancestors use the same word for spirit and breath. Whether it describes God's ethereal presence hovering over the waters of creation or Jesus breathing into the disciples the sacred breath of the Holy Spirit, we are filled with and surrounded by God's Holy Spirit. Psalm 150 calls, let everyone that breathes praise God. We are full of the breath of God. We are full of the Spirit. We are full of new life in Christ. So let us praise God. Let us live in a way that is a witness to the resurrection. Let us live in a way that is a witness to the resurrected God whose sacred breath and Holy Spirit sustain and empower us. For Christ speaks to us today. As my parent has sent me, so I send you. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. So go. Breathe deeply and be a resurrection, or be a witness to the resurrection in your midst. All glory be to God. Amen.